Good, Phil, how are you going? Doing good, Sean. Tell me, like, right now, are you harvesting? We pick every day. Right. So usually, you know, 30 to 50 kilos every day of the week. Let's go and have a look, come on. Have a look at those. Look at these, they're amazing. Generally, with shiitakes, we're looking for mushrooms that have opened up. They've grown, they've allowed to fully mature. Yeah. And it's getting a bit warm in here, isn't it? It's hot. <laughs> it's 25 degrees. <laughs> As the mushroom matures, the gills start to show and they yes. open up. Right. And that's actually generally ready to pick now, so you can, if you want, just take it off and twist it out. And there you go. Wow, my and first mushroom. First, first shiitake mushroom. <laughs> just like a sea of uh, shiitake mushrooms, right? Yep. It's just everywhere. Yep. <laughs> so you inject the logs with the, the spawn. So they're injected with spawn and they're allowed to mature. Let's just break a log and have a look. Oh yeah, look at that. So that's the inside of the log and yeah. you can see the mycelium around, there's a little yeah. hole there. Yeah. And that's starting to regrow. Right. It looks like a good blue cheese, that doesn't it? Like yeah. Stilton or something. <laughs> Absolutely. So we started off growing buttons. Right. And just in a very small scale in a garden shed. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Sold them at the Clevedon market, sold yes. them at the Howick market. Eventually we kind of progressed into the more exotic scene. Right. And that's that's kind of the story and how it went. All right, man, let's go and cook. Let's go cook. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like a whole lot of fun. So here we are, we're in the middle of Phil's fantastic mushroom farm. What I'm going to do is make one of my signature dishes, is the orgy of mushrooms. This dish uh, came to fruition um, through working gusto and inspiration by uh, uh, Antonio Coluccio, a great friend of mine. You know, I just want to showcase this fantastic dish and use as many of Phil's mushrooms as possible. Glorious. Inoki mushrooms. He's got a shiitake that we were picking earlier today. Delightful. Anyway, let's get cooking. We have uh, our ricotta noki. I've actually passed this through a sieve, so it's quite like rice at the moment. The secret to a good uh, ricotta noki is to be as much ricotta as possible. It's just held together very gently with the flour and the egg. So we're going to put our, uh, our flour in. We're going to get our pecorino. Some people use a parmigiana, but mine's pecorino. And then our egg in the middle and a bit of salt. Then we just start to knead it together. They can feel it now already uh, gelling and stiffening up. So here we are, we're just nearly there now. It's nice and firm. Sorry guys. <laughs> Flour it out. What we're trying to do is create a really beautiful ricotta pillow. And as I'm cutting the ricotta gnocchi, I, I dab my knife in flour so it slides through quite beautifully. Cut them into small cylinders. We'll probably leave this to rest. Sometimes it's better to put it in the fridge. So here we are, we've got our fantastic mushrooms. Uh, we've got our beautiful enoki mushrooms. I'm just going to take a few of these off. Look at the crunch they've got to them. They're so fresh, it's unbelievable. We've got our oyster mushrooms. Going to cut the root off. This dish is all about what I call textures of mushrooms. So the mushrooms go in at different times. So these are a hardier mushroom, this shiitake. So these will go in the pan first. A bit of olive oil, that's the splash. Throw in our larger mushrooms. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Get those going. I think these are the meatiest mushrooms out of the three we're using today. And they're what are gonna give us the real oomph, the real strong mushroom flavor coming through. A little bit of butter, just to get them browning nicely. We're just gonna let them cook for a while and get some really nice color on them. The smell that's coming off them, the aroma is like off the charts. Our mushrooms are beautiful, coming up nice and golden brown now. And then we're going to put in our torn oyster mushrooms. I'm only going to cook these for the smallest amount of time. I'm just going to basically cover them in hot oil and butter. It's so quiet and peaceful in here, it's quite soothing. It's quite a nice place to cook. I can highly recommend cooking in a mushroom farm. There we go, so our, our mushrooms are beautifully cooked now, but not too overcooked. The lemon actually brings out the flavor of the mushrooms. And this is gonna make the base of our uh, beautiful butter sauce. Then we're gonna drop in some butter. We'll make our butter sauce. For this though, we need a very low flame. 
going to put some parsley in there as well. If you notice, I haven't had my gnocchi mushrooms yet. They're going in at the last second. So we get the three flavors and the three textures of the mushrooms going through. I turn the heat off now. So as you can see, the gnocchi has uh, firmed up nicely. Now the secret with gnocchi, everybody knows it, that uh, it's got, once it's risen to the top of the water, it's cooked. Uh, for me, I leave him for 30 seconds more. There's not a lot of flour and not a lot of egg in this dish. It's a super cheesy dish. It just needs to warm through. And they're quite chunky, these gnocchi as well. I can't wait to see what Phil thinks of this. The water's boiling furiously and uh, these lovely pillows of ricotta have just come up to the top of the water. So when you're making a sauce and in Italian cooking, you're kind of making thick sauces and people don't really use a lot of stock in their sauces. They, they use pasta water to thin their sauces so to make a good sauce to make a really nice emulsion. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use a little bit of the gnocchi water in the pan and this will give us, oh, it'll give us a bit more length to the sauce and we'll get a bit more sauce, but it'll be very delicate and um, it just helps you know, tie in all the flavors. We'll drop in my little gnocchi mushrooms just a few little bunches. I like to keep them kind of bunchy, so it tells the story, we understand where the mushrooms came from. I bet I need a bit more butter in there, just a touch. <laughs> you don't come to Gusto to lose weight. We've got a bit of a stir still. Maybe give some more salt. Put a gnocchi on the plate. Taste the sauce. That's good. A bit more salt, a bit more pepper, a bit more lemon I think as well. I love my lemon. So here we are now, with finishing touches. I really find it exciting when I'm cooking for a farmer and showing him how much love we put into our food and how much respect we've got for his produce. All over. And again we'll have the textures of the mushrooms running through there. From the, the meaty shiitake to the kind of delicate oyster mushrooms and then those you know really fine crunchy uh, wonderful gnocchis. A few chives on top. Some chives, a bit of oil. But right, I'm gonna go and find Phil and we're gonna try this orgy of mushrooms. Phil where are you mate? I'm out here waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell it. Mate here is the uh, the fruits of your labour. This is my orgy of mushrooms. This is what an orgy looks like. <laughs> Come this on. is pretty exciting. <laughs> Here we go, mate. Thank a bit you. more sauce. Yep. Yeah. Now I know why I work so hard. <laughs> mate, they are wonderful, aren't they? And it's just really lovely to be able to cook straight from the farm. Mm. Pick your own mushrooms, slice them, dice them, serve them. Just wonderful. Cheers, man. Cheers well done. Thank you. Awesome.